Hey guys, it's Christia here from Just One Lab. So I'm putting together my ETF blog for Just One Lab, as I always do. Um, and I go through the same process every week. So basically I choose an ETF, I go onto the fact sheets, I look at the holdings, I look at the issuers, the TR, all of the things that you can... Oh shit, I'm all head and no tails. <laughs> Um, all of the things that you normally read and read about in the ETF blog, which you can find on justonelab.com. Um, so this week I decided to do the new funds Givy because it is by far the cheapest uh, ETF by TER in the country. So I get like super excited about cheap ETFs, and I start looking into it and whatever. And I realize that it's a an S and P top 50 ETF, and so is the Core Shares top 50 ETF. So I. Uh, we had Nerina Fisser uh, talking about how to put together a cool portfolio for yourself and she mentioned the core shares one and I was wondering why she didn't mention this one and I start digging into it and I first of all two different indices it's not the same product so just a little disclaimer up ahead so I start delving into this and I see that so I get a little alarm bell because I see that 43% of the ETF is actually invested in consumer goods and then 23% in financials and another, I've got the little notes there, which is why I'm looking that way, um, another 11% in consumer services. So this is not great for me. If you open any sort of news service, you'll see that the South African consumer is under a lot of pressure at the moment. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, maybe not the best ETF for the moment. Then I put together the top 10 holdings, which I also do every week. And I see that Steinoff is in there, huge exposure to Steinoff, um, even though it's capped at 10%. As, the, as companies grow, sometimes that weighting goes up until they can, they can reweight the ETF. Um, but I see that in addition to the huge Steinoff exposure, there's also PSG exposure in the ETF. But Steinoff, and this is the trick, this is what I'm flipping out about, right? Steinoff actually holds 27% in PSG already. So you've got this consumer-facing exposure in Steinoff, and then you've got the financial exposure, additional financial exposure in PSG. So I'm like, okay, well, that's not the ideal situation. Then I notice Remgro is in there, and I start reading up a little bit about Remgro, and I realize, first of all, that Remgro in, is invested in the company Remgro is invested in RMB in first rand, in RMI, which the ETF is also invested in, and in Grindrod, which the ETF is also invested in. But then, it gets better from here. Uh, Remgro is a top 10 holding of the ETF, but so is MediClinic. But Remgro owns 42% of MediClinic. So you've got this... In this one company, you've got this incredible exposure to a whole bunch of different companies. And in addition to being very exposed to consumer goods and services, uh, just within the ETF, you are also exposed to companies who hold other companies that are exposed to consumer goods and services within the ETF. So that kind of wrinkled my brain a little bit and probably means I won't be rushing out to buy this ETF. Okay, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. Bye.